Hi, um, I'm with grassrootsmapping.org, which is a project dedicated to supporting participatory mapping with communities who are engaged in cartographic dispute. Um, so this is founded by Jeff Warren at MIT Center for Future Civic Media. Not that long ago. Um, so on April 20th, uh, the crisis mapping community began corresponding with local environmental organizations. And by May week one, a team from Grassroots Mapping was actually on the ground. Um, so there are lots of organizations involved in this community effort, but one in particular, the Louisiana Bucket Brigade, stepped up to be the primary point of contact for volunteers throughout the region. Um, here's our field office outside their headquarters. Um, piece of sidewalk on Canal Street. And we're getting organized because to get volunteers out um, to beaches, to wetlands, to the kind of environments you've been hearing about all morning, um, lots of logistics are involved, carpooling, boat pooling, plane pooling, and then furthermore, figuring out from which site, you know, which tactics are best. Um, will it be kites, the most sustainable method, perfect on a light, breezy day, takes um, the minimum amount of, of equipment, and uh, it's very accessible um, to even our youngest volunteers. Um, adding in inflatables to the mix, though, does increase, increase our range. The kites are really good at low altitudes, but with balloons, um, the Louisiana Bucket Brigade folks are regularly flying up to 1,500 feet and collecting imagery from that height. Um, it does add additional logistics, such as finding your local party store to find helium and carting along a huge cylinder um, of some lightweight gas. Um, so traditional aerial photography methods are also being employed. Um, within the first week, the Louisiana Environmental Action Network had sponsored two flights. Um, in the upper left, we're seeing uh, the Blue Seal plane. It's been flying just in the past two weeks. And in fact, anyone who happens to be in a plane, please bring a camera, <laughs> take pictures, and take them rapidly so that they can be seamlessly stitched together, as we'll see later. Um, and actually, uh, chartering a plane is a great way to help the effort. I'm working with the local flight school, um, you can get a pilot and a plane for between two and $300 an hour. So what are we heading towards? We're heading towards collecting timely geo-referenced imagery where none is publicly available. And not only filling in the gaps in the maps, but also going back, collecting over time, monitoring to show change. These mappers were out before oil ever landed, and they've been going out taking successive pictures, and because of the geo-referencing, they can be viewed across a timeline. Um, it's, not, it's not quite as simple as taking a bunch of pictures and then having perfect maps. Um, there's actually a second moment where crowdsourcing is employed, and that's in processing all the hundreds of pictures that come off these memory cards. And Jeff Warren wrote two online tools to help with that. One, MapMill, is where all the images get dumped, and people actually go through and review the pictures identifying which are really good, which are okay, and which are not useful at all. And then from there, the most relevant image sequences are identified and stretched into place using Cartagen, using existing aerial imagery as a reference. Um, Stuart of Gonzo Earth is also involved. Uh, he has a skill set in on-demand custom mapping. You see some of his work here um, with Cat Island in Mississippi. And the volunteer training has been successful, um, so successful that now we're, we're four generations in of people who taught people who taught people who taught people. And there's a volume of imagery such that Stuart is just receiving CDs and DVDs full of aerial photography. And, uh, and sorting through and um, doing a lot of manual work to get these images out there. 
Uh, so here's one of our earliest images, the oil sheen on the Chandelier Islands. And I think when, when volunteers, I mean, average folks with no existing technical skills realized they could collect imagery that not only showed you know, the first oil making landfall, but also the wildlife patterns, it's something that they never had access to before. And I think it really invigorated them. Um, this is Orange Beach, Alabama. And we, zooming in, we see the resolution we're capturing of the oil and the suspended wave action and up on the shoreline. So we've been seeing um, very moving, to say the least, images of oil on beaches all day. But a big point of <clears throat> going through this effort to stitch images together and properly reference them is that we can see in this example, we've got over a mile here of Grand Isle Beach. And um, this picture doesn't need any more explanation. But now imagine the successive generations of imagery that where you will be really be able to see change over time and that this is all community collected. People identifying places that are important to them, remote places that no one else may be paying attention to. Um, oblique imagery is also being collected by Coastal Care out of Western Carolina University. Um, it's more pictorial and it's not geo-referenced in the way that the other images are, but there is a central geotag anchoring it to a position. And this imagery can be used and combined with other, with other crowdsourcing applications, such as um, the Bucket Brigade's oil spill crisis map, where people are contributing any reports of where oil has been cited or um, any observations or media that is referencing locations that could be viewed together and organized geographically. So information on how to get involved can all be found from grassrootsmapping.org. Um, how to's, wikis, blogs, and links to all of the images and online maps and downloadable data. Um, and I just wanna thank um, everyone who spread the word and participated in our Kickstarter campaign. We're now funded on a shoestring budget through 2011, so we'll be continuing to support volunteers and monitoring over time. Thank you.